I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, Mrs. Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video about Hotspot with the Marceau, the speed demon for the French DD line, as well as doing a one massive push down Charlie. Anyways, before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. If you see value in the channel, let us know in the comments below what we can do to get better. And as always, thank you for the support of the community. At 2,000 subs, we're going to give away a free premium DD giveaway. So let's get to it. So Hotspot, one of my dreaded maps because I do not like Charlie right here. Charlie is probably the worst thing to ever have to deal with uh, as a destroyer player uh, but it leads to very interesting battles and sometimes even stalemates but uh, the strategy today what we plan on doing with this one is just doing one massive push right down the uh, 789 line with Charlie and doing literally an all push to just kind of just pierce through the enemy defense and catch them off guard because the issue being is this island right here d turns out to be one of the biggest problems for the southern team because one, you, the the enemy the southern team has two issues here. One, they got to deal with the flank, which they don't know right off the bat. Are they is the enemy or the green team going to push down here and eliminate the red team over here, or do they commit forces to here to support and try to cap Charlie? And that is also dangerous as well. So you have to either split your forces, and while you're behind these islands, you're basically eliminating your use of your guns because these are very, very tall islands. You can't really shoot over them if you're hugging them. So that leaves to be a very difficult situation for the red team in the south, but all while green team is pushing through here using this basic island right here as cover to shield them from any kind of attack the problem is the enemy team has to either advance um through these little choke points uh to cap from that side and that leads to enemy fire just uh, basically a, a choke point and then the other other problem is there's a choke point right here uh to the south uh, end of the charlie where all the guns are pointing there so either way the enemy team has to come through one of these points to either try to take the cap or contest it and that leads to problems meanwhile what are we doing? As the destroyer player, we are in the Marceau. We are in a speed race all the way down to Alpha, throwing the enemy team off. So they're going to commit some forces to Bravo. Most of the time I've seen enemy teams do this. They will send somebody to Bravo, if not more than one. By doing so, they split the enemy team over here at Charlie in half or maybe less. And that gives us the advantage of having a superior firepower. And this is the beauty about the Marceau. It is so fast, one of the fastest DDs in the game, that it you can do this. You can literally push all the way to Alpha, then press and continue to Bravo, threatening their flank, which gives the which makes forces the enemy team to do one of two things. Either one, they're gonna commit forces to either chase or engage you, or they're gonna try to maybe cap Alpha, but then they're gonna hesitate because they're gonna see an enemy flank push to the Charlie, and most likely they'll either turn around to support or potentially compress through A, but then that also leaves their open flank open to Bravo, which then we push right through with the Marceau. But the other cool thing is we have the option to either press back through the middle with the Marceau if we notice there's nobody there, or just go ahead and do a, one, a 360, come back around, I'm sorry, 180, and come back around to go and support and contest. So many, many options that the Marceau provides. You're going to see in this game, it's going to be very interesting that the Marceau is so fast that we're going to be able to do literally a turn back around, come back zigzag, it come back to support Charlie, then zig it back, figure eight, back to alpha. And the speed that the Marceau and the Clabert can, uh, can achieve allows you to do these kind of maneuvers and to respond immediately to where the threat may be. And that is the beautiful thing about the French DD line. It is so quick and agile that you're allowed to respond where needed. And especially since Marceau is still, I believe, has the highest DPM in the game, the highest rate of fire, the most damage you can output for a destroyer, that this is just one of my favorite destroyer uh, lines to play. And I definitely recommend it for you. So let's take a look how this, this uh, actually turns out on Hotspot. And uh, let's check out the video and hope you enjoy. All right, here we are in the Marceau, heading to Alpha Cap like we did and constructing, instructing our team to press down, full press, full court press down to Charlie. Before we begin, let's talk about the Marceau. It is the cold alternative to Clabert. She shares Clabert's hull, but her differences weren't a completely different play style. She mounts the 127mm guns of Colbert at the trade-off of reduced HE alpha damage and slower shell ballistics in exchange for higher AP alpha. She also enjoys a concealment advantage over Colbert and has long-range torpedoes. Marceau differs from her sister Colbert in many ways, primarily her guns, which boasts the highest DPM of any tier 10 destroyer. However, in exchange for the powerful guns, she still suffers from lack of smokescreen, and her torpedoes are rather underwhelming due to their poor speed, mediocre range, and slow reload. 
This leads to a destroyer hunter type role where she can test caps and runs down enemy destroyers with her extremely high speed in order to make up for her poor consummate, which you will see later in the video, while gunning them down with her powerful guns before quickly turning away and going dark to search for her next prey. Marceau is a power, or I say a poor countered cruisers due to her poor ballistics and her limited range means that unless the player takes upgrades, she must venture dangerously close to battleships to deal damage to them with her guns. Overall, Marceau is best played as a destroyer hunter or a battleship farmer while also making a meteor torpedo boat on the side. So we already talked about the pros and cons about Marceau and you can see exactly why um, I do enjoy her over the club air and you could just uh, you could see just basically how fast we can cap alpha. Um, the guns are really the bread and butter of this uh, particular ship line and uh, play style. You can see how fast we are proceeding down. The idea, as you can see, our, our, our friendlies are actually taking over Charlie, overwhelming the cap. Now, the enemy team has to make a decision as to how are we going to penetrate this defense. Are we going to um, engage from the east and uh, go through that choke point, or are we going to go through the south? But we, you can see our Summers is already moving through the south and spotting them from behind. So... Quite honestly, they're getting torped from behind, and also they have to proceed through a choke point. Meanwhile, we in the Marceau are speeding right down through the middle, 54 knots, and we're spotted right off the bat, which means they do have a destroyer over here out spotting us. We're going to go ahead and disengage, go dark, and then regroup and reassess how we're going to actually uh, attack this, this side head on. Now, obviously, we're not going to take a three versus one kind of duel, even though I feel comfortable doing it in a Marceau. Uh, the speed and the guns really don't make uh or don't make me afraid to take this engagement however we're going to play a little smartly because we are playing clan battles and these players are a little bit smarter and they know what they're doing they're communicating and teams usually tend to work better uh, rather than in randoms randoms people are all over the place they're not communicating so we have a Stalingrad out in the distance just sitting there camping, which is good, which means one of their players is just sitting there and just out of the fight. They're not really doing much. One of our battleships takes out their Moscow, but we, however, we do lose a Petro. So we've kind of a one-for-one one exchange, a one cruiser set down. That's okay. Uh, as long as the Charlie team can slowly pick off ships one by one as to proceed through the cap. Meanwhile, we are going to go ahead and regroup at A and see where the enemy team... Now, I'm assuming... Based on that, I got spotted first, which is the destroyer at Bravo, and also you have two cruisers that were last seen at Bravo, which means there's a three uh, ships over here while there's only four at Charlie. So we do have a ship advantage at Charlie. Unfortunately, Hanover does take out another Des Moines, so we're going to have a uh, call for focus fire on the Hanover. So as you can see, the Hanover is probably the deadliest ship on their side right now. So we have, what, one, two, three ships in Charlie with the destroyer over there. So we're going to have those three ships go ahead and target the Hanover and try to melt down and see we're calling for it right now. Communication is the key. Hanover is probably going to burn down really, really easily uh, with the amount of firepower that we have over there. And then we're also going to keep an eye at Bravo. I still don't know where their other destroyer is at. I believe it's two gearings, which uh, the Marceau will eat them up alive just easily. However, the uh, gearing, if it doesn't shoot, will outspot us all day long, giving the other enemy team time to shoot. So we're going to go ahead and uh, press back to Charlie and support and see if we can help burn down uh, maybe one ship or two because... And there goes the Hanover finally. That's one battleship down while we still retain our battleship. We notice the other cruiser is still to the south. So we're going to go ahead and race back down to Charlie and see if we can find where one of these destroyers is at. I think our enemy team called that. There is a gearing out there. And I think the gearing to the west of us is still at Bravo. And the other gearing either continue pressing with our cruiser. There he is. Okay, so we spot the other gearing, which means this is a prime real estate for us to attack. So how to be a good destroyer player is reacting to the battlefield of how it begins. We never anticipated a gearing to go all the way to the north, circle back around in our spawn, and come back from the northern side. So guess what? We're going to go head on one-on-one -on -one versus uh, gearing. I feel comfortable with it. We have our full HP. The gearing has nowhere else to go. Notice that he's pointing towards me, which means either he reverses in a slow manner or he has to go full speed forward in order to turn. So I know he has to go forward at some point. So why not go ahead one-on-one? -on -one. He's within my concealment range. I'm definitely within his concealment. I know his concealment's around 5.8 or 9. So we're definitely within four and a half. He is pretty much done and going to melt. And so look at the DPM. This is why Marceau excels as destroying destroyers because look at the amount of firepower we are dishing out. 3,300 damage per salvo, and that is ridiculous. And we get a little help from our Marseille right there. Very, very powerful cruiser. Uh, I'm not afraid to do that. And all while, look, we also have the French saturation mechanic going on where the, the armor and the health 
sections of the ship saturate faster than most other destroyers. Thereby, every time someone shoots at me, it doesn't deal as much damage as it would to other destroyer lines. So that's something to think about as well, That which makes why Marceau and maybe Kabarovs are some of the worst destroyers to go up against. Very frustrating because every time you shoot, you feel like you're not really doing much to it. And also, we also build for gun range. We are literally launching shells at around, what, 12 to 13 kilometers, which is also annoying for battleship and cruiser players because you're lobbing Marceau kind of Colbert-style shells at long range, and these things pack a wallop and a punch, as well as start a lot of fires, which is very annoying. So we're going to go ahead and leave the cruiser alone that's way out in the distance. I believe that's a Guten Lau, so we have our Nova Brisk and our Summers over there to deal with, so we're okay with that. We are now going to go ahead and press back to Bravo. Again, the speed of the, the Marceau allows us to do this to react and respond kind of like a quick reaction force back to the enemy team where they're actually flanking now notice we are being flanked and taking uh, the enemy team is taking alpha so we're going to go back and spot alpha so our enemy our uh, friendlies can shoot the enemy team all while we're going to burn down the stalingrad notice he is burning down really uh, very fiercely here he can't put it out he's got a permit fire and we're going to add more hate to that as well as we send more. Ooh, and finally, Guten Lau goes down, which I knew was going to happen. We have our team that was 2-1. to one. It was a 2-1 to one advantage. They got it. So we're going to see if we can help it burn down this Marceau. Ooh, now we reveal by shooting, because we use our speed, we can dodge these shells really easy against the Colbert, our cousin on the cruiser side, another French kind of uh, melting uh, 127 guns. I mean, these things are basically it's a double Marceau, but just cruiser style. And look at this. Our guns are still dealing a lot of damage this is like going family tree right here just going back and forth with the french line and we are exchanging same caliber guns same everything and he is getting smacked again the colbert is a glass ship it's made out of paper uh literally any kind of hit anywhere is going to blow it up and there you go see again drawing that fire out creating him to reveal his position allows our buddies to then use that advantage notice the colbert was not shooting at anybody else but us and that's another sign of a good destroyer player where you distract the other player wasting his shots that really did not connect it up with us at all allowing our friendlies to actually get a free nice easy clear shot to eliminate the enemy team and now all we have left is the gearing which again this thing is excels at destroying uh destroyers and i'm gonna go straight out the smoke keeping in a slim profile to mitigate damage from the torpedoes and we're just gonna take a shot at it we pretty much have already won the game why not go uh, just go head on one on one 1v1 versus the gearing, and I think that also I'll show you uh, one of the weird mechanics of shooting up in close range. It's very odd, and I'm not used to it, but you'll probably see it. We get proximity spotted right here, and we're going to go try to ram this guy, actually. I thought about ramming him. Uh, unfortunately, I thought he was going to launch torpedo, so I had to nose back in, turn left. He shoots at us, doesn't do anything, scratch the paint, and okay, we're shooting. We're getting some connection shot right here. Right here, I'm shooting, and I'm missing completely, literally at point-blank range, and it's because, look, the shells are just zipping right by him, and I'm even though I'm aiming right at his ship, because we're so close, it doesn't account for the lead. So, I'm look, I'm constantly missing the ship, and I was so frustrated as why I'm not just able to hit this guy until we're farther away. I don't know if that is a weird mechanics of the game, but maybe, like I said, I'm not uh, leading enough. But anyways, there we go, and do we get this kill? And splash. Splash one, there is our only kill of the game, and that is how the Marceau excels at quick reaction responding, uh, or quick reaction force, that is, to these um, kind of uh, fast uh, happening battles where you have a gearings, you have people going in your spawns, moving all over the map. I really do enjoy it. It's an awesome, awesome DD line. Definitely try it out for uh, clan battles. It still is the king of clan battles, in my personal opinion, for destroyers. Uh, but that's it. Here is the uh, build at the end of the, uh, the gameplay video here, and it's focused on primarily reload and range. But hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, bell, 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 and as always, stay safe. Cheers.